Uh, let's assume that you're swimming in a pool between 0 to, say, 10 feet. And then uh, you drop the coin. Let's say you drop the coin while swimming, right? Uh, and the, the x, random variable x, will now be uh, at which location in the swimming pool the coin will be found. Fair question, right? Yeah. Now, what do you think the shape of the distribution function will be like? No, there's like no preference at all. I mean, you don't, you're like going back and forth. I mean, okay, maybe <laughs> if you are really mainly playing over here, then, then you're right. Then it'll be more like a bell curve type thing. But if you're just making, uh, just going from here to there multiple times, then you really don't know where the coin will land. Right? So in such a case, you have to assume that <coughs> x follows the uniform distribution so the probability distribution function will be like this. It will be a constant. Just a single constant number. Same probability for everywhere. Uh, where the value of x will now be between 0 to 10. Now we can even find out what this c is. Uh, because I know that if you add up all the probability, it has to add to 1, right? Uh, but uh, notice that I titled this as continuous distribution. I say that because uh, we don't know if it's going to be like, what, 3.3 uh, feet from this side or maybe 5.7 or something like that. It, it, all the numbers are not just integers, but all the, all the possible real numbers are counted, right? So if you want to count... If you don't want to account for all the possibilities, it's not sum of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until 10, just like what, what we were doing for the discrete probability distributions. Uh, now, instead, you have to do integration. Okay. You have to add up every possible uh, value. So what you have is, if you integrate this <coughs> function f of x from 0 to 10, which is the domain of the function, this value must equal to 1, because that accounts for every possibility. Right? OK. <coughs> uh, and then because f of x is just a constant, uh, you have 0 to 10 of constant c, dx equals to 1. Well, then we can just do the regular integral. What's the integral of c? CX. CX, and you plug in 10 and 0, it goes to 1, so you're going to get, when 10 goes in here, you get 10C, when 0 goes in, that's 0, so 10C is equal to 1, that means C has to be 1 tenth. Okay, so you have C equals to 1 tenth. All right, so now that we know that the probability distribution function should be 1 over 10 uh, from x from 0 to 10. Uh, you can ask several questions, so let's see. Uh, example 1. What is the probability that the coin is found found uh, in the interval say uh, 5 to 8 so here's the midpoint 5 right and between 5 to 8 what's the probability that the coin will be found there <laughs> and the way you calculate for the discrete case, you would add 
uh, p of x equals to 5, p of x equals to 6, and then 7 and 8. That's how you would calculate that. But instead, now you will have to use integrals. So you integrate this 1 over 10. The PDF is being integrated from 5 to 8. And this is just a simple integration. Uh, you can even do this graphically because the graph of the function is like here's 1 over 10. It's a constant function. And we've learned in calculus 2 that the integration calculates the area under the curve. You know that, right? So it's this, this area. This base length is 3. Height is 1 tenth. Therefore, the integral is 3 tenths. Okay, uh, so second question, uh, probability of a coin not found in the interval 5 to 8, what would that be? Will you just subtract that from 1? Yeah, because uh, out of all the possibilities from 0 to 10, it, it, when you see not, that means you subtract from 1. Right? So the answer is simply 1 minus 3 tenths, which is 7 tenths. Okay, so you can basically ask uh, what's the probability of the coin being found from here to there, from here to there. Those are easy questions, but then we'll make this slightly more complicated by now asking for the cumulative distribution function, right? So example three, find CDF. Now what is CDF? CDF is where uh, it's, it's the sum of all the probabilities from the left end point to a certain point. Okay, so uh, usually it, we write small f for this, the PDF. This is a probability distribution function. Uh, and then, oh, and, and then, uh, by the way, if you have a discrete probability, this is really also denoted PDF, but there we say probably, I think this is, probably density function. That's how it's yeah, yeah. So, so uh, for the continuous distribution, I write PDF, but it, it, it's slightly different. It means probability density function, not that it matters much. Uh, but uh, we use small case F for probability density function, and for the CDF, we, we use capital F. And by definition, what it is, is you start from the left end point, which is 0, and you integrate until x. Okay? All of this f of x, and you do the integral. Now, some of you might not be okay with this because uh, you're using x for <coughs> the integral and then you're putting x here. So, a good idea is to, instead of using x's, use t or y or whatever. Okay, so do so, just choose something else. Yeah. But basically, the idea is exactly what we're doing here you're integrating f of x dx from some integral. Same idea here, we just integrate. Okay, so what is that? That's 1 tenth. If you integrate 1 tenth from 0 to x, that's going to be 1 over 10, oh, sorry, 1 dt, 1 over 10 dt, or 1 over 10 t, and then you plug in x and 0, you get 1 over 10 x minus 0, so that's your CDF. Okay, and it kind of makes sense because if you draw the graph of the CDF, uh, when x is 0, it starts from 0, and then when x is 10, it reaches 1. It's a straight line because the integral of a constant function will give you a linear function, right? If you have a linear function, if you integrate, you're going to get a quadratic and so on and so on. Right? And then, uh, if x is 10, it should reach 1 because uh, 
that accounts for all the possibilities, right? So we know for, in general, what happens is that for a CDF, as you go closer to the left side, the value of the CDF should go close to zero. As you go close to the right side, the value of the CDF should go close to one. And the graph of the CDF should always be increasing because the probability should be increasing as you move to the right. Okay. So those are some obvious properties of the CDF function. Any questions so far? I'm trying to do the most basic ones because it is going to get, get harder after this, right? Okay. Uh, and then uh, we might ask something like, uh, use CDF to solve example one. So we are going to do the first question just by using CDF. How would you do it? Yes? Would it be the probability of uh, 0 through 8 minus the probability of 0 through 5? Perfect. That's exactly what you do. So what you do is you do f of 8 minus f of 5, because this calculates the probability from 0 to 8. So from, from here to there, right? And then you, from here, you subtract this much, and what are you left with? You're left with this much. Right? So that gives you uh, probability, uh, which is, uh, if I plug in 8 here, that's 8 over 10 minus 5 over 10. So it's going to be 3 over 10. Okay? 